I want to wrestle you so freaking bad. Wrestle me. Welcome, everybody, to the Juice Pro Wrestling episode 131. November coming fire. November coming fire. All right. First of all, I have to say thank you to everybody out there who watched and listened and downloaded to episode 130 with PCO. It was a fucking awesome episode. It was one of my personal favorites. Um, got a lot of positive feedback on that one. I thought it was great, so I'm glad to see there's other like-minded individuals out there who thought the same, who had the same individual thought patterns, if you will. And that kind of leads into uh, a little more ROH shit I got going on tonight for you guys, for Sretton, for Bodie, for everybody out there watching and listening. And if you're watching on YouTube, I hope you're hitting that like and subscribe button and dinging that little fucking bell. So you can get notified every time we come out with something sweet for the soul. Anyways, Ring of Honor just completed the finals of their ROH Pure Tournament. They crowned the new ROH Pure Champion, which hasn't been done in over a decade. They haven't had this belt, and they brought it back. Uh, if you checked out last week's episode, then you know what we're talking about. Uh, you can go and watch it for free on Fight TV. Get the app. Check it out. Anyways, a guy who I think we all thought was going to win, The Octopus. The guy who likes to stretch him like Stu Hart did. Jonathan Gresham is your new spoiler alert. ROH Pure Champion. Bodie, what's your thoughts on it? Good call. Definitely a good call. I like John Gresham. John Gresham. Right, great, great. Shrenton, what's advice. your thoughts on it? I like him too. <laughs> I'm, but totally another thing. I'm totally joking. Go back to Bodie. Fuck you, Shrenton. Fucking pianist. <laughs> No, I thought do it, it to me too. He was. I was. I was waiting for it, and then he was going to come back to me, and then back to you. Anyways, <laughs> Mike, come no, back. dude. Like I said, I think it's a great call. He's a he's a perfect choice for it. When I saw who was all in it, I was going with Gresham. Money was you on knew, him, right? You kind of knew where yeah. the ball was going with that. You one, saw right? where the money bags were going. It was yeah. going towards Gresham. Put the ball in his court. Let him get that title. Let him uh, let him kick some ass with it. I think it's well deserved. Yeah. Build some fucking prestige. I mean. Mm-hmm. And have him hold it for a while, you know. Don't let it be this three month, four month thing. Let him hold it for like you know a year, or well, maybe a little bit longer. You know, why not build it up? Like this dude's had it for a year, year and a half. Build me up, love. You know what I'm talking about. Everything. I think of all of the artists that Justin is saying in the 300 plus hours of podcasting we have. JP he's Dubducka. saying Dave Matthews the most. Just keep that in mind, audience. Yep. This guy's full of shit. Truth. Shut up, you fucking stupid idiot. One of the best <laughs> one of the best pure wrestling matches I've seen since I got into this whole shit with the resurgence of uh, since I met YouTube boners was uh Warrior Wrestling Daga um Jonathan oh Gresham match. And it got something happened at the end. I don't remember what happened. They had to cut it short, but um going with the quarantine stuff, these pure wrestling matches are sort of perfect because you can hear everything they do and it feels like an old-timey old-school 1800s wrestling match minus the vaseline and really blatant homo eroticism lance you obviously gay you tried to oil me up and that just ain't cool (laughs) (laughs) but uh but yeah gresham is wrong with that gresham is pretty awesome uh pure wrestler i'm I'm glad that uh that he won that's my take i haven't watched it i plan on so oh so some more news coming out of the ROH camp, it was announced on Halloween that one very nice, one very evil Dan Housen has officially been signed by Ring of Honor now. Uh-huh. Um, I'll give my hot take on this real quick. I think it's an awesome signing. As much as I do like Dan Housen, I, I kind of I'm wondering where it's going to go in, in Ring of Honor. You know, um, I, I you might group him with the wrestlers, a certain group of wrestlers, much like Orange Cassidy. Um, and not to say that he can't, Dan Housen can't go in the ring. I mean, he can. I've really enjoyed the matches I've seen in person and things I've seen on television. But I think, I mean, that's kind of where the comedic value wrestlers, like where the value in these comedic performers kind of differs a little, where you get Orange Cassidy, who everybody thought was a big, just nonsense bullshit fucking character and he's shown big time against legends like chris jericho that he can go and he really can um so my only thing is is i think dan housen and people you may not like my opinion on this but great that's why i have one because you may not like it and you may agree um it it's going to be a little weird to see what happens in roh i i think dan housen was really suited for the indies um 
just because there's a lot more freedom to do what you want to do there. And shenanigans. Not that you can avoid criticism or anything like that. I'm just I'm kind of I'm kind of curious to see the matchups. Um, right away, I'm thinking, you know, uh, who who's the guy, Bodie? The uh, who? What's his name? Vinny, the Horror King. Oh yeah, um, Vinny Testaverde. No, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> Vinny Barbarino. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Oh, I fucking forgot his I, name. I don't anyways. know. It must have went down with that last gulp of passion fruit. I think I was right. I lost the passion. Go figure. <laughs> is there a promotion that could cater to the fact that he's uh, he's a good wrestler in the ring, but he's a promo guy? Like his promo, uh, he's good. good voice. Promo that shit's good. fun. He's good. He's more entertainment value, I think. And you know, some people out there might say he's just the fucking tequila spot. Um, I mean, I, I don't know, and I'm not knocking the dude because, like I said, I'm, I'm thoroughly entertained anytime I see him. Uh, whether it was at you know, I've seen him live at Black Label and Freelance. I think it's fun uh, as hell. Yeah, he's super yeah. fun. I'm just, I'm kind of curious to see where ROH is going, you know, because with this whole pure tournament, and obviously they're going to have, uh, maybe they're trying to turn a more sports-centric, serious edge, but at the same time, it's wrestling. Anything's up in the air, you know. Wrestling. We've said it. We did a whole fucking episode about comedy and wrestling. Um, I just, I, I want to see what stories develop with him. I'm very curious. I mean, I speculate. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to speculate the spackle, no. my brother. <laughs> I'm going to wildly good. I, it, I'm very, I'm very happy for that, Greg. Even though he keeps ducking and diving and dodging and dipping the juice, you know, but that's just that's the only thing he's done wrong <laughs> no so far. No the juice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So what's going on so far with the Marty Squirrel? Is anything going on? Does he has got some legal troubles or what's what's happening uh, with him? He's just, ROH. He's, is, he's done. Him and uh, yeah, Dan Math, I just uh, read that they have severed ties you know they were called out in the speaking out movement uh -huh. i don't know exactly what happened i don't want to go down that and, fucking uh, okay. dusty road again and delirious right. is now booking he's the head booker like he was before he was yeah help. and, and I, will, he's just doing I, I will i will uh i will shrink my rampant speculation and say it will be cool Shh. if Danhausen had a stable of cool promo stuff that he had his own stuff and then pco on the other side had a stable of his own monsters now you're talking and then together they have like kind of have like a rivalry for the next year two years on top of whatever the hell else ring of honor is doing they could do that which could be super fun and if they start to build it right now by halloween ooh, it could be a really good uh, look at you right right talk about long-term storytelling here long term dude I'm this just is like saying this is writing for next wrestlemania during the danhausen in my opinion has <laughs> But because of his character and the way he talks and stuff, if he, he usually does like two to four minute bits. But if he was given more time, he could do some golden shit. And he's been used to doing showers. These, he's been doing he's been used to doing these like interactions that are very fun and funny and cool. Uh, PCO, same thing. He's been making these short films for the last year. And I don't know, man, it could be fun and they could both go in the ring. And also PCO, if they got in the ring, could possibly um, destroy mur Dan murder Housen Dan Housen. That's what exactly, <laughs> that's exactly yeah. what I think so, would happen. And he could, I mean, he could probably, uh, I mean, that shit could be epic too. I, I think, I think I Dan agree. Housen is a solid in-ring worker. Right. But I think if he just had one awesome feud, it could take him to the next level as a performer in the ring. Yeah. And maybe he kind of wrestles with else. absolutely everybody. Right, right. He needs, I think, one, uh, he needs a couple guys that are kind of his rivals. I think something else that would be cool that Bitch. would go along with his character would be a... <laughs> what a fucking piece of shit you are. <laughs> um, Got him. With his character, because his character is supposedly uh, like the demon from The Exorcist, right? That's what his character is. Yeah. I think if with a lemon he twist. possessed people, you know what I'm saying? And or wrestlers. Oh... I would love to see something like that happen. Now, if you want to talk about like a group forming a, a stable, a stable boy, <laughs> um, that would be something awesome that they could work on and develop, you know, where he's possessing them. And maybe, I don't know if they're, I wouldn't say having to paint their face like him or anything. They, they could work out the kinks, but I think with that character and like who he's supposed to be, I think that's something that hasn't been tapped into yet with him. I think we can add another layer to his character maybe give them something more other than just the comedic shtick. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Cause I enjoy it. But like I said, I'm just kind of, I'm kind of like eh, up in arms about what, what ROH is going to do with them. Not that I'm, I don't think they'll do anything positive with them. It's just, it's kind of weird. Cause he's one of those guys that I just you mean negative. Man, I, to be honest, I didn't really, I didn't 
You didn't really see him in like a big promotion. You know, I mean, sorry out there. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> like, oh, fuck you, Juice. Hey, I know what you, you buddy. Um, I just didn't see it, but I am happy for the guy because he's a mm-hmm. nice guy and he's been busting his ass and he truly deserves it, dude. I mean, content creation is key, especially in this digital social media age and him and Warhorse and guys like Effie and Zicky Dice have been killing it. So, hey, good on you. Yeah. Welcome to ROH, buddy. It'll be uh, it'll be definitely interesting. And uh, just to follow your point, look at what happened with Orange Cassidy in, in AEW. Um, when yeah. he first went to AEW, I was like, what are they going to do with him? Where can he go? And I think where he's at right now, kind of showing off what he can do in the ring. Mm-hmm. And he's opening up you know, another layer of his character. I think it just adds to it. And I'm hoping ROH... Uh, is the same with Dan Housen. Start peeling off layers of a character. This is who, how he was in the Indies. Let's, you know, open up another chapter and see what's next for him and what he can do. And I love the possessed idea. I think yeah, that would be bad. That's badass. fucking great. I, yeah. I like uh, possessed seven churches, but hey, that's another day, another time. Oh, that's a good album. <laughs> Moving good. on. Hey, uh, MLW, one of our favorite fucking promotions. We've had a ton of their superstars on. Uh, the restart is coming this month, November 18th. You can watch it on uh, YouTube, and I think that Saturday of that week, um, so the 18th, I believe, is a Wednesday, and it'll drop on YouTube and then whatever other streaming service or cable channel that they got. Uh, I mean, they did a lot of, Court Bauer did a lot of shit, as we've talked about on here, like in their, I'll call it their off season, the COVID season, while they weren't doing anything, he was securing deals, TV rights, uh, so you'll definitely see them in more places than they were um they're still really excited if you guys follow mlw social media i like the little cards they've been putting together with uh you know the current roster and it's giving you details on them they had even fucking had kevin von eric on there like the patriarch you know of (laughs) it was very fucking cool uh so i'm super stoked to to get some new mlw man i don't know about you guys but uh it Dude, it's going to, I think it's going to fucking blow people's minds with some of the new talent mm-hmm. that they haven't even divulged to anybody yet. Mm-hmm. Yep. I totally agree with you. I cannot wait. Um, MLW, well, I thought they were on a roll before the pandemic hit, before they had mm-hmm. took a little break. And uh, I was, I'm just as excited now as I, as I was before when they went on the break because uh, I can't wait to see what comes out of this, you know, the new, new talent they're bringing in and almost like a new start kind of yeah um, hashtag so speak, the restart you know, exactly hashtag <laughs> the restart so i think they're just gonna come out of the gate you know and just destroy like usual they put on great shows they have a great roster and um i can't wait to see what court and the boys are gonna do yeah i and i'm pumped for them to come back to chicago i might have been dreaming i thought Chicago-y. i saw somewhere where it's like <laughs> oh we're coming to chicago but it i think it was like just a street team or whatever they're trying to get people to join but uh Man, I miss those days at the, uh, and it wasn't that long ago. I mean, I'm trying to think, did I hit one up this year? No. So they were supposed to come back, I think, this year sure. um, to Cicero Stadium. And then all this shit happened, and it, it got pushed back and pushed mm-hmm. back, and then it didn't happen. I think it got pushed back once because of uh, AEW running that weekend with, uh, yeah. what was that, Revolution or something like that. Um so I'm I'm fucking super stoked. If you guys ain't on MLW, then hey, please please <laughs> coin a stupid silly little phrase. Quit sleeping on them, man. <laughs> don't sleep on them, bro. Yeah, and don't sleep with them either, because you might be with somebody, and that could cause friction. And uh, <clears throat> Carl Anderson. Anyways, oh, six feet apart. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Hey, real quick. So, how was you guys' Halloween? Good. It was awesome. It was cool, man. Um, boys had fun. Uh, we went to, it was funny cause my brother, my brother-in-law had a, uh, little get together with the family. Um, him and his now wife signed the papers, made it official. Just sign um, your life. I mean, your name on the contract, yep. which is funny. That's what they did. They went up to breakfast, had the, uh, you know, the concierge or whatever the hell dudes call. I forgot what they're called. What do they call they had the sex. Anyways, the guy, uh, over Just breakfast piece. Yeah. Something like that. You know, he presented the paper. He's like, he signed this. All right. You guys are married. And then nice. uh, that was it. Yeah, they did they it up. Kissed them both on the mouth, and then they kissed each other in the mouth. It's really weird what they crazy. do. Yeah, at, during breakfast, the yeah, PCO breakfast justice nuptials. of the peace. Wisconsin's yeah. in uh, Wisconsin is an odd state. Yeah, we're in a league of our own, dude. Yeah, here's your cheese ring, and then uh, you make kiss the bride. Yeah. I also the bride. 
the entire wait staff will kiss yeah, the bride. And then they give you salami. <laughs> Here's unready sausage. Yeah, I got a sausage. I went and I got married up in uh, the blue the blue barrel there. Yeah, and then I, they gave me a sausage. They said, "Hey, you're married, Mister and Missus. You may now eat the sausage." That's what and they, they did. then they made us watch box trolls. That's true. They did that too. <laughs> yeah. But no, I had fun. The boys had a great time on Halloween. They got a bunch of candy. They were excited to go. So it was cool. Threaten. What about you down in Tampa? What'd you do for Halloween, man? I dressed Swim. as. Uh, I actually dressed as you and Get a tan. Uh, went into the that, downtown man. and uh, people were throwing rocks at me. So I knew they it. don't like you down I here. I knew it. No, that's only because they knew the juice likes to get stuck. <laughs> 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 no, man, I didn't do shit. I'm a social distance guy, but uh, since I'm outdoors, I feel it's cool. So I went out to a local bar and had a few beers and listened to some live music, yeah, which felt beers. good because I haven't done that in like a year. That's awesome, dude. Uh, yeah. Stayed away from people, listened to some uh, <laughs> some shitty covers, and it was pretty cool. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yep. yep. <laughs> hey, I got some MMA shit for you real quick, and we ain't going to spend a lot of time because some of it ties into wrestling. Um, I did watch wrestling. what was supposed to be Anderson, <laughs> Silva, Anderson Silva, his last fight. Um, God damn, was it brutal, man. He got fucking... He got... He got bludgeoned. He got brutalized, and he, he got fucking retired, man. Yeah, that was a. Uh, it was pretty brutal to watch. I, I knew he was gonna lose going coming into. It. He's just dude's too old, man. He ain't mm-hmm. got what it takes anymore, and no. maybe he just was too cocky. <laughs> he got you know. <laughs> hey, Father Tom caught up with his yeah. ass. So happens. that kind of sucked because Spider Dude was the shit back in the day. He was on top of his game back in the day. I was never a huge fan of him though. But I did respect his game, man. He, I like uh, I love that front kick, dude. Yeah, like, he always he had a lethal fucking... front kick. Always had uh he always got you with going one way, deking you and getting the other way, you know. Yeah. Faked right and come with the left, left kick, cripple you, and then just knock you out, you know. Just, and then Father Time just did that yeah. to him. So then, yeah, uh, exactly. He got a, hey. a coup de gras right to the jawbone. Right. Hey man, but nonetheless, first ballot Hall of Famer, UFC by far, dude. Mm-hmm. I mean the guy's an absolute fucking legend. It was cool to see. I forget his opponent's name. Um, but at the end, you know, there and there was fucking blood all over, and they, they were both bowing like to each other and like fucking hugging. It was a cool moment. I'm really into that. Like, not to sound like cheesy or corny, but I don't give a fuck. Showing respect, the sportsmanship, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. And, and the respect, respect, and knowing that, dude, you just fucking retired a legend. That's like. What if back in the day, like Kobe came out and just made Michael fucking look like silly, right? You Crossed know? him over, but and there's still like that respect or something like that. It, it was it was very cool. It was very awesome to see and those guys fucking hugging and you mm-hmm. know while they're all bloody and sweaty and then all of a sudden I'm bang-ing-ing. Uh, what? Never mind. And the concierge comes and kisses yep. each guy and gives them a <laughs> bunch of sausages and tells yeah, them. Yeah, then we all come. Here's a round trip tick to Wisconsin where shit could get crazy. <laughs> exactly. <Here's> some champagne <laughs> Any moment. moment. Uh, here's yeah. here's the uh, high life. It's the uh, champagne of beers. So yeah. let's kind of crescendo into the uh, crescendo. Ray Mysterio is saying that he doesn't doubt that Kane Velasquez will be <laughs> returning to wrestling. Maybe not the WWE. I don't know. Uh, I read that Ray was saying that was Kane's goal was to always get the WWE. <laughs> here's the thing. Kane looked awesome when he did that shit in AAA, right? You know, I mean, he, he was doing all the, the Lucha Libre stuff. He looked very comfortable doing it. But, uh, man, come on. He went to the WWE. He had that bullshit with Brock Lesnar in Saudi Arabia. It was a waste of fucking Sorry. time. You know, essentially, so Brock can get his fucking win back. You know, did like a Hogan Warrior Halloween yeah. Havoc deal. Um, exactly. Sting Triple H. <laughs> I guess my question to you guys real quick, um, knowing what Kane can do seeing the really shitty kind of storytelling and story they had with him when he did do the one off thing in WWE. Um, and we'll start with Stratton first on this one. Would you like to see him back in professional wrestling at all and more specifically WWE? My opinion is that I don't care. And that's a reflection of it because I guess. Uh, physical, uh, physical capability and athleticism. He might be amazing, uh, but it doesn't seem like the storyline's any good. And also, he looks and when he walks like a retired fighter. Straight, yeah, he looks like mm-hmm. 
he just came from the steakhouse and polished like I mean, forty fucking bill seventy sixer. <laughs> when he was at it, when he was in his heyday, he was like uh, he's the guy that had like the the heavyweight that had cardio and like anybody else. He was a fucking machine. Then he um, ate a bunch of tortas and killer. it was fucking I, I don't dumb. know. <laughs> but he just doesn't like even then he, he he looked good, but like he looked in shape, but he never looked like. Brock Lesnar looks. He never no. had like pecs and all that shit. He's just oh, he was a monster. Saggy. He's just he a looks killer. sad. His body looks like a, a sad face. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. That, I mean, it, would, it shouldn't matter if he can perform in the ring and if he's get a, got a good storyline. I mean, sorry guys, but r- other so, than Ric Flair's arms, he didn't have a great right. body either. So bottom line is for you personally, there's no interest, right? Don't give a shit. Yeah. All right. I, I'm with you on that one. I could be made to give a shit, but I don't care. No, no one cares about your fucking opinions. <laughs> <guy, laughs> idiot. Yeah. Fucking asshole, barely talk. Oh, anyway, Bodie, what's your oh, opinion on it? Um, I share the kind of the same feeling. Like, I don't really care. Yeah, he looked good when he was in AAA and stuff like that. But when he came to WWE, it was totally different. It's a different style. You got to fit our way. Um, and we're going to rehash this old rivalry that you had in a different fight. You know, like, if you're going to do that. In a legitimate up, sport. <laughs> exactly. In a legitimate fight, you know. Don't okay. knock me, guys. I, I still think <laughs> wrestling is a sport. It Fucking is. assholes. Marks. But that's cool and all. You know, that storyline <laughs> is cool. Build up to it, though. He could have came out so much differently. And it was just a cash grab, man. Paid exactly. It. And it didn't uh, help that he needed knee surgery right off the bat anyway. You know, I don't right. give a shit about Brock either. I think I called him yeah. LeBron earlier or something. But when, <laughs> when they had the uh, Royal Rumble last year and he almost like. Brock Lesnar. Brock yeah. Strowman. LeBron yeah. Le- Lesnar. Strowman. I, I LeBron wish he would Lesnar. I wish he would have eliminated everybody at the Royal Rumble. That would have been so awesome. As he was doing it, he was in there for what forty-five minutes, yeah. beat red, dying, super tired, purple. Like Dude, this would, yeah, purple. I thought, I thought it would have been amazing if he would have won. Say what you want about Brock, though. I do think, you know, he gets a lot of shit just because he's not around. But he doesn't need to be around. He's an attraction, dude. And that guy. Dude, he has shown time and time again that he's willing to put somebody over. Oh, yeah. And he's went. He, I I've heard stories of him going to you know Vince and Co. and saying, "Hey, I want to work with this guy." And they're like, "No, we don't want that for you." Not getting right. it. He's one to push some of the younger talent and do some of the shit. And Brock is good. Brock can fucking sell for you. Brock, mm-hmm. you know, I don't think he's that bad. I think he gets uh, because he is kind of an asshole. I mean, aren't we all? He doesn't like people, which I totally respect. He lives off the fucking grid. I mean, I think he's fucking farming right now. Um, I, I think he gets a bad rap because he was the champ. He had the belt, but he was never there. But in essence, he's a prize fighter, dude. They mm-hmm. they built around that and that monster and the legitimacy that he brings to the table makes fucking sense. Because if, you, if you're a fan of MMA and UFC, all that shit, Bellator, these guys are fighting... How often are they fighting? How many times Not a often. year? Like maybe, maybe twice, but all right. the time once. Right. And I think with Brock Lesnar, I mean, he brings that in that aesthetic to professional wrestling upon his return when he came back. And what was that? Like it'd been a long time now, like 20. 20- yeah. 10, 2013. He came back there. real early about 2013. It's been like, he's been back for almost 10 years now. Some mm-hmm. ridiculous dude. But, uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see him turn up again sometime, and I'd almost welcome it. You know, I, I would welcome a heel, fucking Roman Reigns with uh, Paul E. Paul Hammond yeah. against Brock Lesnar. That could be you no know, the way they're telling the stories right now. That's a good. That would be a good story. And that's they some, can build something around it. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up real quick because I want to touch on that real quick. Um, so SmackDown last week uh, was a Jey Uso fucking. It's like I'm with you. He goes with his family, and that is that storytelling that they're doing right there is the best shit WWE has done in over a decade, hands down. I mm-hmm. love everything that they've done. I love that they used uh, uh, the the Wild Samoans, yep. you know, Afa and Sika as a part of it. You know, as even though it was a small part, but acknowledging Roman as the tribal chief, the, tribe chief. the head of the table. I love all the verbiage that's being used. Oh, I love yeah. that Paul Heyman's the mouthpiece. I love that Roman is able to flourish in this character because just watching it and everything unfold and I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, now I'm really, really fucking seeing why Vince had a fucking huge bonbon for him <laughs> for yeah, years and exactly. tried to force him down our throats, but it was just doing it the wrong way. Yep. You know, like guy, man, I, he just, he 
he cuts a hell of a promo now. And you could tell, especially with him working with his family, it's easy. It's easy to come from the heart mm-hmm. and draw emotion and suck people in when you're doing something like that. And for him to, you know, tell his family like, hey, man, I love you. I love you. I don't want to do this to you, but you will fall in line because I'm the I'm the big dog. You know, I'm the fucking tribal chief. I'm the dog. <laughs> I'm the dog. That uh, big then, bad dog. <laughs> <laughs> for Jay to do it and to join him, which is, you know, something I was hoping that was going to happen. And so I hope good. when Jimmy comes back, you know, that he gets with it, too. And they just they have this, like, Samoan dynasty thing going on. And they fucking run rough shot, man. Because fuck that. Fuck the shield. Fuck all that past bullshit. You know, this is a huge strong point for Roman as a character, as a as a performer. Even though I didn't like him when he was being shoved down my throat, I... uh he wasn't a shitty performer. I mean, dude, he, he was one of those guys that he always went out and he did his job and he did it well. I mean, you had guys like AJ Styles saying when they had their clash that like, this is still the height of pe- people booing Roman before he came out with, Hey, I got uh, what was it? Leukemia again. Yeah. Um, saying that AJ's like, man, give the dude his due. He's good. I use mm-hmm. one of my favorite people to work with. And he showed that. I mean, he's, yeah. he's good. And now that he's really kind of coming more into his own, Dude, fucking top awesome. notch. I, I, you don't hear it very awesome. much on here, and it's not because I don't want to say it, because it just doesn't happen very much with WWE. That is the greatest thing they're doing right now. I'll put that over, dude, even over, I'm sorry, Bodie. I know you're going to freak out on me. Oh, I'm, I'm going I'm, to. Over Bray Wyatt. Over yeah, I agree. Fucking anything they're doing even the nxt shit you know they just had halloween havoc it was great you know it looked fucking awesome a bunch of people got hurt (laughs) but you know it's halloween what the fuck (laughs) i agree with that uh that whole storyline i love i love the way they're letting roman reigns portray himself um you know a lot of people have been wanting this but it goes to show you that you're trying to mold somebody who's not John Cena into John Cena or somebody that's not Hulk Hogan into Hulk Hogan, somebody that's not sting into sting, so on and so forth. You know, yeah, you're trying to fill that void. You're trying there's to build. An- huh? huh? There's another little thing I had to interrupt you. Cause you said sting the stinger, all his merch and everything yeah. has been and pulled, pulled. God, please go to AEW. I don't care. Yeah. I just want to hear Tony <laughs> Schiavone fucking <laughs> say <laughs> on TNT and the stinger. Season. I'm a fucking Mark, yeah, dude. I don't care. Raptors. I want to see that TNT. I'm, I'm with you on Tony that. Shivani. I'm I'm totally with you on that. That'd be cool. That would be cool. Yeah, definitely. But going back to what I was saying, yeah, you can't because that's what that's what uh that's what I wanted to do. Damn it! Yeah, I wanted to put him. I need like a Cena. I need a Hogan. I need I need a Vince McMahon. Damn it! Yeah, not this like a beef again. Castle. Oh my God! Here we go. You oh. two clowns got in my office. Oh, somebody God. say beef castle. Somebody beef castle. tell Linda I need a beef sandwich. Linda, I don't think she's here. She's a fucking piece of shit. Somebody get me Roman Reigns and some baby oil. Now you're talking. I can get on with that. That's that's what I'm talking. I can get on that. That's what I'm talking. Uh, about. He could be my tribal chief. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, three Vince's, so, you know, the never Vince's and entertain. Yeah, they always pop in at the worst times. But yeah, you know, you can't do that. And I'm glad that somebody either opened his eyes or he saw that or something happened. Like, okay, yeah, he's not John Cena. He's not going to be the next Hulk Hogan. He's going to be the, the first Roman Reigns. Yep. And this is the way they're doing it. And I think they're doing it right. Which when he eventually turns like face, it's going to be a huge face turn, you know? So look what happened to The Rock. Yeah, same well, here's thing the, the Rock. Speaking of the rock, damn, Bodie, you just feed me more. What is your name? You. Fucking Ryback, you fucking <laughs> piece of shoe. Um, <laughs> so ideally, like some good storytelling would be all right. Rock's Rock's pretty much done with wrestling, right? I mean, he'll make yeah. these one off appearances here and there. It's getting closer towards mania season as we wind down, you know, 2020. Um, does Rock finally, is this the year he gets in the Hall of Fame? And is this the year that he does the job Whoa. to his cousin or his nephew, whatever their fucking relation is, <laughs> to put him over at Mania? Roman versus The Rock. Okay, so here, feel me out on this one. Roman's going around saying for however long it's been until Mania, you know, six, seven months, whatever, saying that he's the head of the table, right? He's the big dog, the draw, the tribal fucking chief, right? And then all of a sudden you hear, if you smell, smell! 
what the cock is spooch. I mean, the rock is cooking. And dude, I'm telling you, huge fuck, and especially with a crowd, God, that would fucking pops, dude. Road Warrior pop style. That would be that huge. That would be so awesome because you have people that, as much as they may not want to admit it, that do like Roman. And like we said, like what they're doing with them right now. And then you got like probably the biggest entertainer of all time to come out of the sport of pro wrestling. And they're related. There's uh-huh. that story, which uh-huh. is just going to tie into everything else. And you have fucking Dwayne do the job and yep. put him over and be like, oh, man, you know, in the sport of wrestling, you might be, you know, in entertainment shit, you might be the fucking head guy or whatever. But in the, this is my house wrestling. You ain't it anymore, Dwayne. Exactly. Get the fuck out. That's a great storyline, dude. And you need to have fans. And I'm think, not even getting paid know? to write this right. shit. And it's insane because you think about uh where we're at right now with no fans or some like AEW and some other promotions are doing some fans, you know, will WWE take that? <laughs> really? Role? Yeah, they are. You know? <laughs> that, that idea doesn't work unless, uh, unless it's a football stadium full of people, yeah, then it would be amazing. Exactly. Short of that. It's not, and that's worth what it. I was getting to. Exactly. And I'm glad you said that. Cause that's well, what you I was don't think it works to. in the, you don't think you guys don't think it'll work under a Thunderdome circumstance. Cause now here's the thing. We didn't, Mania last year was kind of dull and boring, even though there were some parts that were highlighted that were all right. Um, mm-hmm. They didn't have the Thunderdome yet. No. Which, it adds a little, but it doesn't add much. Like, it's weird. I'll put it this way, watching the Bears game, you know, this past <laughs> Sunday, which was complete <sighs> shit. Please don't. But anyways, it's an empty fucking soldier <laughs> field, right? And it's piped in noise. And it's just, mm-hmm. it's fucking weird. It's still... Yeah. I'm like wondering, like, are they piping it in through the stadium or is it just through the, you know, live feed? Because it's just fucking weird, man. It doesn't, I don't know. It, it, I think with, uh, like when I watch Bound for Glory, I think not having any fans really hurt it because Mm -hmm. it's, you know, although there was some great shit going on, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Um, I, I kind of got bored and I'm like, you, I can't imagine what it's like for the people in the ring. I mean, they're professionals. They're going to do their job nonetheless. Um, but it was just like, man, I think during the Moose and EC3 match, which was kind of a, a cinematic deal, I just, you know, and I had people over, and they weren't really like huge wrestling people anyway, so it, it didn't help. But it was like, eh, all right, if you guys don't want to fucking watch this, I- I'm with you. Because it doesn't have that same vibe. There's not the crowd getting rowdy. Mm-hmm. You know, like even if you didn't know shit about wrestling, but you're watching it on television with your homie and you can see that the people there are getting fucking hyped up, like it just does something, you know, mm-hmm. it fucking. Yes. It, it, it's just the energy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Infectious grooves. Uh, what up, Mike? There, there you go. <laughs> um, so I, I don't know. I, 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 I guess I, I agree with you guys with that, yeah. but it would still be huge. It would still it would be, be. That's epic fucking shit right there crowd crowd would elevate the storyline to the next level though the next wrestlemania is gonna be really tough because we were in a particularly weird spot with the pandemic and all that shit and so we let a lot of stuff slide with wrestlemania that same style of wrestlemania will not i don't care what anybody says i i watched it i was entertained the whole time if you repeat the same thing i'm gonna be fucking bored and i'm gonna hate it like i won't hate it but i'm gonna be bored as fuck which is not fair because I'm actually really bored and uninterested with WWE as it is. Yeah. But uh, but WrestleMania is a different animal. But um, should they split it in the two days like they did? They I, I heard that I heard they're going to do that. That's again. what I heard too. They did and do then, Halloween and, Havoc and, really well though. Yeah, Halloween yeah, they Havoc did. was. I thought was it was good. Dope. It was solid, yeah. man. It was dope. Um, but speaking of splitting it in the two days, so in New Japan Pro Wrestling, it's been a while since we talked about them. Uh, Wrestle Kingdom. It's going to be another two-day event. It's going to be fucking awesome. Yeah. And they just announced the Super J Cup, which has got a plethora of other contracted talent from Impact and elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, give you a quick rundown real quick of who they announced. So Hit December 12th, Super quick. Super J Cup. Hit me with ACH. You got Leo Rush. You got Chris Bay. You got TJP. You got El Fantasmo, who we saw at Warrior Wrestling. You got Ray Horse, who we saw oh. at Warrior Wrestling. You got Clark Connors. And oh. you got Blake Christian. Oh. oh, yeah. I'm getting You're, really. He's really hired. hired. He's vanilla That's midgets. a lot of beers. He's hired. <laughs> so I think that shit's going to be awesome, dude. That's It's really good to see New Japan. You know, I thought somebody from AEW was in it too. I so can't remember. Might be. Have those, you guys, those are just the ones that I, I saw today. So right. you know, have you guys been keeping up with New Japan? 
A little bit. A little bit. There, yeah. This is why I'm asking. It's pandemic times. There's no crowd. Uh, Japan is a different style of crowd where it's much quieter. You still get oohs and ahs and reaction, but it's just much quieter. That hype and loudness and, and crowd chaos, like the chaotic energy, the hype energy, um, the concert energy, um, it's not there, right? It's different. Right. So during pandemic times, has New Japan, like, has it fallen at all? Like when you watch an event, is it sort of really similar to the same thing? Yeah, I mean it's pretty good. Yeah, I, I, it's and they do. Ha- I really think they have some fans. Yeah, they got like uh, I think a limited capacity. Yeah, it's unlimited. It's the uh, um, same thing's going to happen at Wrestle Kingdom. They got limited capacity. Yeah, I guess and my my question is: Is it just as good as it was before the pandemic? That's what I mean. I, to ask. I think so. I mean, with anything though, I mean that's kind of a hard fucking question to truly well, answer. It anyways, it's it's going to be it's going to be a little bit different. You know, I'll always say. No, no fans compared to having fans is always going to be a little bit worse. Not that the oh, yeah. guys and girls in the ring yeah. are really doing that or trying to do that, but that's just how it is. It's that's wrestling as a sport or a uh, entertainment medium that needs it needs the fans. I'm sorry, it, it really does to make it mm-hmm. just fucking pop, man. But New Japan, I, I don't think it's really fucked with them at all. They they're still putting on killer shit. They still got good storylines going. They kind of got something right now um, with the Bullet Club, where I think they're doing going to be heading towards another like civil war uh, storyline. Maybe yep. it's done a little bit better than it was with the Elite and uh, you know the Tongans, but uh, you know Jay White and Evil. There's there's maybe a little friction right there, so that's pretty cool. Um, it's something I need to keep up with more because, dude, uh, they've been killing it. They've been fucking killing it now. Yeah, it seems like they're going to work with uh, a little bit more promotions and bring in some of these, you know, like GCW and Impact talent and so on and so forth. Uh, guys, they even do shit for MLW and ROH. Let's see what happens, man. Working together is always cool. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. I always love that seeing... Uh, different promotions team up with each other. I think it should be done more often. You get a lot more accomplished. You, you do. And you, you really have to, even if you're not straight up competing, going, you know, fucking head to head with the E in order to get like mass attention and mass, I think like media appeal and uh sports appeal and fandom and all that shit. Um, you really need to work together, you know, mm-hmm. and pull in because the same people that are watching new Japan aren't watching impact and vice versa. And now, you know, with all these promotions, that's just yeah. how it goes. And there's some of these people that are watching New Japan and uh, all that that are not watching the indie scene, which right. is ridiculous. Because nowadays, I mean, now is the time to watch the indie scene. Mm-hmm. And there's so many, you know, territories are back jack and they're fucking ripping shit up. And you'll get to see these guys and all your heroes from AEW are still coming. You know, like when Orange Cassidy made a. Uh, the return to GCW for the collective in Indianapolis mm-hmm. a few weeks ago. Huge pop. Huge, huge pop. Yep. You know, these guys are going to places like that and becoming stars, which is cool. And yet they're still being allowed to do other shit, which is cool. Now that kind of segueing into something I know Bodie wanted to get into. WWE is not allowing like third party streaming. Um, so like for instance, guys, uh YouTube and Twitch accounts uh for their contracted talent for both men and women not allowing it anymore or if they do they're like controlling it because they want to get paid for it you know it's like hey you're under contract to me you got a successful twitch show or youtube show or stream or however you fucking pronunciate that shit they want to (laughs) cut they want a piece of that proverbial pie so Bodie, i know you got something specifically to talk about with uh what page was uh saying with this whole debacle so yes go ahead well, yeah, I think it's bogus that they're doing that, you know, uh, especially during the pandemic. They're not pulling in as much money as before. But then you got somebody like Paige who went on Twitch and went on a tirade and voiced her displeasure and said, you know, she broke her neck for WWE. She was doing that shit for years. This is what she lived and breathed forever was wrestling. Changed her face for WWE. Exactly. Changed everything for her, you know, for them um, and for them not to let her have an outlet anymore a Twitch outlet and say, she can't do this or that. And she's like, I broke my neck for you guys. I put my ass out on the line for you. When I shot, probably shouldn't have wrestled. I did wrestle and I ended up getting permanently hurt. And what she loved and what she grew up loving and working her ass off for is 
got taken away, which was wrestling to wrestle. So I think that's kind of bogus that you, you're not letting her do that. This is her outlet. She's making you know money off of it, what she needs to, because she's not doing anything right now for WWE. You know, they're not using her at all. They're just kind of like, oh, whatever. Right. Um, I just think that's stupid to just be like, oh, well, we own your likeness and everything. Now we need to own your Twitch channels. You know, same thing happened with Lana. Uh, AJ everybody, Styles, AJ everybody, Styles. you know, yeah. yeah, just everybody got affected. I think that's something that uh, shouldn't have never happened. I think it's a dumb rule, but then again, WWE does have a lot of dumb rules. You're a giant corporation. It's yep. not the same working for this company as it was 20 years ago. No, not at all. You know, uh, nowadays you're not just working for Vince McMahon. You're working for every shareholders, in fucking boardroom, you know, and Snickers, Gatorade, yeah. you know, whatever else, whoever else is Snickers was a bad dog. R.I.P. Oh, Sean sh- Connery. <laughs> exactly. I'm the last of the dragons. <laughs> what about this one? You get pussy even if you write a bad book. <laughs> I think a little deep on that. Oh, I think you are, Trebuck. Yes. Sredden, what's your thoughts on that real quick? Hot take. I take, I actually disagree with both of you. If you're a company like that, uh, especially if it's wrestling, this shit would not fly 30 years ago because those streamers get way too personal. I don't think, uh, I don't think we should know that much about these people's lives, but it's a different world. It's 2020. Um, I don't know, man, legally with branding and all that other stuff. Uh, I guess if you're an indie performer, um, I, I, I would say somebody like, uh, let's say let's, let's, I'm not throwing them under the bus. I'm just mentioning somebody like Ethan page, who's got three solid gimmicks, um, and he's really good at performing those certain gimmicks, but he's got a he's got a he's got Twitch, he's got all this social media, he's got yeah, YouTube, yeah. and yeah. and it's uh, it's it mixes and mingles that world where he'll come in and he'll be now he's got the new fucking amazing gimmick with the uh, Karate Man, um, <laughs> but he comes in and he'll be he'll be Karate Man one match with with all the personality that that entails, and then he'll go around and then you know he'll he'll be doing unboxing videos. So do I like that stuff? I like the in ring work. I like the acting. I like. I like the curtain to be up. I I like to, as as a person doing a podcast like we do, I want to be part of the backstage shit. I want to know the goodies, you know, and and as a mm-hmm. sub, and I like to share that goodies. But those performers, they shouldn't be allowed to share anything, and it should be very secretive. I, I think. No, I, think, I I think you're missing the point on that, though. No, I know, I know. I know. It's not that they're pissed that they're doing that. Yeah, it's, I they're saying, hey, we want you. You guys are making money, and you're you work for us, so. That, let me put it to you this way: For the company you work for now, we're not going to say any names, right? If they I'm were to tell you tomorrow advocate. that you had to stop doing this, and we're not making any money, so guys, feel free to send us some <laughs> fucking donations because we po. Um, if they were to tell you, and I want a serious fucking answer that you couldn't do this or you couldn't do anything associated with like media or podcasting, talk about whatever, just because they don't want you doing it, whether there was money involved or not. What would your feelings be on it then? Uh, because of my level of passion, this shit, I would not, I would, I wouldn't work there anymore. Well, that's and that's fuck me up. Therein is the same thing with a lot of these people, um, and that's just what I'm getting at. I mean, I'm kind of a, an anti-authority motherfucker anyway, to some extent, you know. But it's just another, I think, another for a- thing that WWE has done wrong to make people shit on them, to hate them, to make people not want to work there. I think there's bounds of reason for some of that shit. I think if you're a current performer with a current storyline and you get more, do you get, I think you, if you have a certain amount of like TV time, uh, then what about the guys who don't have TV time, like I think they should, I think they sh- yes, TV. I think they should be allowed to do Twitch streams and they should be allowed to do whatever they want and get, and get money from it. Um, I do think it's bullshit. If, if, if WWE gets a cut of that stuff, I don't like any company that is, I understand you're making money off of your product, um, but when your profits rely on your workers, it gets to be weird. I, I don't, yeah. that's, I'm not saying that correctly. Like, let's say you're a salesman and you sell cars and you used to get like whatever, 10% of every car you sell. And then suddenly commission. Yeah. And, and then, and then suddenly your company, instead of like marking up and making the cars more expensive, they give you yeah, 8%. Yeah. So they get more profits as a company, but they're taking away your money and you're like, we'll sell more shit. I don't that's like when that. I take away their lives. Well, that, that's what I like in this too. Like <laughs> I just said that I take their lives. <laughs> it's, it's give and take. Fuck so em. next topic, 
Yeah, he's next getting topic. hot. He's getting hot, dude. He's it is getting me fucking hot, and it's getting him hot. Yeah, it is. It's getting. Might have to too. do a little uh, Are you space docking. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We're both horny. Yeah, we agree. That. Anyways, hey, uh, <laughs> there's so no time October for that. October 28th. <laughs> huh? October 28th. The Next wrestling year? world lost a oh, another last. absolute <laughs> fucking legend in the business. Mm-hmm. Um, the wild eyed Southern boy, <coughs> Tracy Smothers. You know, the guy with in ECW, the FBI, the. Yeah, the full coming out to stay alive. <laughs> like, that was the best. Dude, let me break it down for you real quick. Tracy Smothers was a man who wrestled for the NWA, the WWF, uh, ECW, Smoky WCW, Mountain Wrestling. Smoky Mountain was everywhere. Okay, won numerous titles everywhere he'd been. Um, and you know, it, it didn't stop with him once he. I mean. He, he was 58 when he passed. I think that's how old he was. And weird enough, he passed away in Evansville, Indiana. I don't know how correct that is, but that's what I read. Uh, so it's kind of weird. Um, Tracy was a guy, and, and especially as soon as it was announced, you could see this from wrestlers, from dude from the WWE to AEW to all over the indies yep. that had so much to offer people. And I went, I know myself, I went down the YouTube wormhole after he passed. And saw all, uh, you know, shit that Colt Cabana had did with him, you know, inter, uh, internet wrestling or independent wrestling dot TV, bunch of shit, dude. There's all kinds of shit everywhere. Old videos of him wrestling a legit grizzly bear. Yeah. <laughs> which yeah. is fucking awesome. Um, dude, the guy was awesome. He could, he was a fucking heel through and through the shit he would say. And some oh of God. these promos, there was one where he's wrestling at WrestleCon last year. I think it was Joey Ryan's penis party and he was wrestling Sue young. And he's like, get this crazy bitch out of the ring. <laughs> he's like the only place that a w- woman belongs in is uh, on her back or in the kitchen. <laughs> like, oh, and people are talking and, and dude, he's GP. working these people and you could see fucking fans, like, and especially women, getting pissed off licking him off he's like hey i'm the heel here you know fuck you <laughs> i'm trying to work here <laughs> but dude was just a wealth of knowledge and experience mm-hmm. and there's so many wrestlers even dude like guys you wouldn't think like ricochet and shit that had so much nice shit to say about tracy and he was and i have my own personal experience which i'm gonna get to here in a second but uh said so much great shit to say about how he was um and this guy wrestled and he was been battling cancer for i think the last several years um we thought he had overcame it but then i remember seeing some maybe as far back as a few months ago that he might be sick again or he wasn't doing well but he was still doing his thing man and rocking and rolling with it and uh he just he passed so much shit on for you know the heel that he played in the ring um dude behind the scenes he was fucking watching people's matches telling them you know uh guys like chris dickinson knowing who he was and saying he was one of his favorite performers you know like it just and helping out the next generation doing the right thing never being like not available to give advice to somebody or a uh you know critique somebody and help them out and i i could totally fucking see that i remember so it was me and shout out to big ed the assassin back in like 1998 uh tracy had came out and wrestled uh it was Man, I can't even think. It was somewhere in Northwest Indiana. It was a show going on. We were still in high school. They were juniors or something. We we were there with Ed's aunt, I believe. I think it was, or maybe it was the other guy. We were there as aunt, somebody's relative, right? And we go outside. We fucking blaze up a little Rudy Toot Toot, <laughs> and it stunk so fucking bad. <laughs> <laughs> we're sitting there. We go back and we're sitting watching the match. It's like, oh man, I think we stink. You know, I think we stink. No, yeah, They're like you sit next to her. It's like, oh fuck. Anyways, um, dude, Tracy came out. He did a great job just performing and entertaining and uh, getting to meet him and talk to him for like, it was it was very brief, a couple of minutes, and I'd be a liar if I told you I remembered exactly what we talked about this being fucking 20 years ago. Um, but it was still, for me, a super awesome moment because I, I'd known who he was since I was a little kid watching WCW. And then, you know, his, his ECW run with the FBI, the full-blooded Italians was so awesome it was you know starting to get on that comedic level for him and to see everything he had done on the indies after was just amazing to me and uh you know he he will be sorely missed his uh his daughter jesse bell wrestles um she was i don't know if she still managed or not by uh 
Nikita Bresnikov, who was a previous guest of this show. Um, and actually, I believe the funeral, as of this recording, this recording that you guys are hearing on Wednesday right now, is actually being done back in the past on Monday, November the uh, 2nd. Uh, his funeral is today. So I just I want to send him my shout out and respects to fucking Tracy Smothers, dude, because you guys need to fucking go. Mm -hmm. And go down that fucking YouTube rabbit hole, wormhole, whatever they want to call it, and just watch his shit and watch his work. It'll make you smile. It'll make you fucking cry. It'll make your guts fucking hurt. You <laughs> know, and, and you will be like, wow. I like, go back and watch a shit with the bear, dude. <laughs> like, yeah, look at Grizzly exactly. Bear. And always remember that T is for terrible, H is <laughs> for horrible, U is for ugly, and G, what's the G for? Jail, because thugs can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, good old Tracy Smothers, man. Uh, he was he was awesome. He was one of my favorites uh, growing up and watching him in USWA or whatever it was that he was in, and then Smoky Mountain, WWE for a little bit, or WWF back then. There but was a YouTube clip I saw. He called somebody, and pardon my French, because I'm not being you know, a bigot or anything, but uh, <laughs> dude, who was it? I can't remember the guy that it was. I think Lance Russell was interviewing somebody. <laughs> And fucking Tracy Smothers comes in. This guy was flamboyant, right? And <laughs> Tracy comes out and he's like, you want to come out here and act like a fag? <laughs> like, oh, my <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. He, dude, he wasn't afraid to pull that trigger, man. Dude, nothing, um, man. He, nothing. I, you know, all I got to say about him is if anybody out there does watch uh, any of his matches and goes down that proverbial wormhole, just watch his body language. He was so into what he was doing. He sold his character. He sold who he was so much that if you watch his body language, if I had to tell somebody that wanted to wrestle, that was just getting into it, who they should watch. I'd be like, look up Smothers and watch his body language in the ring. He knows where he is at all times. And he knows what he's doing. 14 steps ahead than everyone. else. Everything. Like, psychology was great. Man. Yeah. Psychology was on point. He knew how to get, the, uh, the crowd over, he knew how to get his opponent over and last but not least himself over in the process. If he was taking a beating or whatever he was doing, you know, even if it was uh comedic, he yeah. always sold it, dude. Like perfect. Everybody. And that's, I think that was like one of the biggest takeaways from him. Like you just said, and it's a rare thing to have as an in-ring performer to get everybody over everybody. Exactly. You know, especially as you know, he worked a lot uh, later as a heel. Um, but he still he did it, man. And in the dance, I'll never forget. Dude, he's coming out doing oh, the yeah. FBI and the, the best. And the, yeah. the best. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous, yeah. man. And, and uh awesome thing is I got to meet him at a Denny's in Racine. When no ECW, shit. ECW <laughs> came to Racine. I met Big Show, uh Sabu, R V D. Um, but we went to Denny's and Big Show was there too, but then full blooded Italians were there too. And oh, so this is the WWE C W. This was yeah, the WWE C W so sure. this was uh when they were doing like their little house shows and stuff they came mm -hmm. to Racine a couple times and uh he, yeah i got to meet the fbi and uh they were awesome dudes little guido and tracy smothers and was it big Vito? yeah i think you yeah. think he was in it at the time yeah um, they had uh who was the other guy in ecw i'm uh, trying to remember i can't remember his fucking name i hate that i have you know people are gonna call me out which i hope they do because yeah. not enough you if you know it Time it in the comments. Yeah. Comment, help us out, man. We can't remember shit. I've taken a lot Zero of terror shots. Apologies over the years. for the amount of information that comes out of your guys' fucking mouths coming from <laughs> your brains. Yeah, yeah. I dare people to call us out. It's fine. Like it's, it's fine. fine. Yeah. I don't think we should ever apologize for that <laughs> shit. I apologize. But you guys come up with any just of these fucking marks out there the listening, time. mainly to myself, you know, because I well, should be able to throw right. it out there, but after you know. we get done recording, go in that mirror and uh, and go ahead and lay in there yourself go. for 10, 20 yep. minutes. Yeah, yeah. That. I approve. Let yourself have it. Come on, Tom yeah. Brady. And I'll call you too. I'll call you. I'll tell you what the piece. I I'll might call go you. in that I'll mirror. Call you a little bit of, <laughs> I'll call you a little bit of Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, hit them high notes, kid. Hey, so there's one more thing I got to talk to you guys about um, before as we wind down here. Um, so it's been a it's been a crazy fucking year, right? You know, the pandemic, everything, all this shit, all the people we've lost this year, um, whether it's celebrities outside of wrestling, uh, you know, as we were talking about with Tracy and Road Warrior Animal and the list goes on and on, man. It's it's just been a crappy year. Right? And it doesn't seem like it gets any better. You know, I mean it 
beauty is in the eye of the beholder. You know, you, you determine your own destiny and all that shit. And you can choose to remain positive and stay the course and, you know, move forward, which is what we do all the time. And guys like PCO did check out episode 130. Uh, but man, dude, this breaking news, you know, you've all, you guys listening and watching right now, I've already heard it by now, but, uh, so Kylie Ray announced today her, and before I even say this, so she was a no show at bound for glory, right? I had tuned in for that and she just didn't show. And I was like, what, why the fuck is, you know, Sue young, like what, what's going on? And then, you know, next week on impact, it didn't say anything they didn't allude to anything. And I'm thinking like, Oh man, you know, I, all of a sudden I'm getting like memories of AEW and all that shit. And now she announces today, like officially, and I, Bodhi, I got it pulled up. I don't know if you have it pulled up. Yeah. If you want to read it to everybody and let them know. And before we go any further in this, I'm just going to make this fucking statement. All right. She announced her retirement from professional wrestling today. Okay. There is this thing. There is this boundary as, you know, fans of somebody. If you're, and I don't care what entertainment medium you're in, right? There is this boundary, unless you're like family or super close friends. But you you don't have to know everything, okay? And I get your side of the coin, though. I get that you some of these people are your heroes, you know. And to some people, as weird as it sounds, but hey, some people are like that, and I'm not judging you. That these people are what drives you to go every day, you know. Um, hey, I've had my fucking rock star heroes and this and that, and people that I've idolized and worshipped, and that I want to know every fucking move they're doing but as i've grown older and realized and been in the entertainment business myself it's it's not always there all right people and this is just what i want everybody watching listening to understand that please respect personal space your fucking stupid ass comments that are on social media about the whole situation you don't need to do that because you just make yourself look like a fucking fool and i guess unless you're okay with that then you know so be it people are all I'm saying is respect the space in this in the story we're about to tell you guys because mental health is a real fucking deal. You know, it's a real fucking issue. Not everybody knows how to handle it. And we're just going to assume that that's what the deal is. It's what we've been led to believe. But what I'm getting at is just please respect the personal space. Don't, you know, try to fucking hit up people that have worked with Kylie and whatever, be like, well, what's the real, I get it. I get, you want to know, I want to know too, but I'm not going to hit up the people I know who are close <laughs> with her and be like, Hey, what the fuck happened? It's not for me to know. The only thing for me to know is what she chose <clears throat> to do right now. And then maybe down the road, I will see her again. So hashtag, thank you, Kylie, because she's fucking awesome. And we'll get a little bit more into that here in a second, but Bodie, she announced yeah. via her Patreon today. Yep. Go ahead. In her own words. In her own words, she said, Good morning. I'm truly sorry for the pain I've caused and miscommunication. I am currently unwell. I'm also sorry that I wasn't able to get this out before your monthly subscription charge. I wanted to take this time to say I'm no longer a professional wrestler and I'm currently taking a break from social media. It's been a very hard decision to make, but please understand when I am well, I will try to fulfill any obligations that I have missed. During this time, most tiers will not be able to be fulfilled. Please feel free to unsubscribe from this membership slash Patreon account. Thank you for our understanding heart. Right. And that was that was all we got. Okay. And like I said, going back to that thing real quick, just respecting someone's space. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. I guarantee to you that you will never know what caused this. We will never know who shot Biggie, who shot Pac. Did <laughs> Kurt really kill himself? You're never going to know. And there's some shit in life you just have to fucking accept. And this, this is one of them. I mean, she's already had an episode once with AEW. You know, girls on top of the world, man, about to get this massive push, about to be the face. Let's face it, because at the time, I mean, even still, if Kylie was in AEW, she would be the face of the women's division because she's that damn good. You know, she was about to get the we impact. Would believe the impact knockouts championship. You know, I'm not going to speculate on to what it is. I'm, I'm almost maybe probably certain that it's, you know, maybe some 
mentally that is going on with her to where she's not comfortable doing what she's doing or doesn't feel good doing what she's doing or she's really down with her on herself. I can't really speculate too much. You know, I just know that like, if it is something with mental health, man, like people just need to kind of step off a bit because it's, it's some for real. You don't know how these people are feeling. These people that you watch on TV are real fucking people too. You know, that you don't know what's going on in their daily lives or in their head that keeps them ticking. Like, as I alluded to earlier, you know, when I was a kid, I never would have thought in a million years that, you know, my rock and roll idol at the time would put a fucking shotgun in his mouth and blow his brains out. And I'm not saying that's right. anything akin to her situation, but you know, mental health injuries that could have caused that, you know, Bodie, you've been involved in some stuff. You've had to deal yes. with stuff like that. Yes, I have. Uh, it's just, it's not something to be taken lightly. So um, I'm going to shut up here for a second and let you guys kind of fucking go in the outer space with this one. And uh, Bodie, go ahead. Um, yeah, I've dealt with uh, some things, you know, I'm going to pull back the curtain a little bit and um, you know, it could be uh, from I I do have stuff that I deal with. I take medication for um, because of head injuries I endured when I played football and did wrestling, shit like that, you know, and it caught up with me. And that's what it stems from, but it could stem from a lot of different things. But I noticed not long ago, you know, a few years ago, I was having anxiety when I didn't used to have anxiety, um, depression, bipolarism, you know, suicidal thoughts. It was terrible. It sucked, dude. It was the worst time ever because you don't want to do anything. And what happened was it led me to cancel shows. And you know me. You know how much I love playing, being out there, vibing with the crowd, vibing with uh, the bands, my friends. Dude, I didn't even want to do that. You know, like I've had, I had to cancel a handful of shows. And the thing that sucks is like one of them I canceled. It was like the day before. And I told uh, my buddies, you know, I told Jesse and I say, I was like, dude, I can't do it. Like, I'll give you more details later, but just let you know, I'm not doing well. So I know how it is. You know, I can totally relate to her. So yeah, give, give her space. You know, if you have something stupid to say, don't say it. Cause you don't know what she's going through, but I can relate kind of like I saw it. I was telling you earlier, like you could kind of see it coming that not in a bad way. I didn't mean that in a bad way. I was saying like, Oh no, I saw it coming, you know, right. So right. like a dick or anything like that, but no, I went through it. So I knew what she was kind of going through. I, it might not be the same, but I had that anxiety depressing thing um, where it did lead me to cancel some shows. And I love playing music as my life, you know? Um, and it sucks when you can't do something you love. Right. So, but yeah, I, I love her huge fan of hers i hope she uh gets what she needs and do it and it does get better so it's Redden. i don't have any input i'm a fan you guys said everything that needed to be said so i'm gonna stay quiet on this one sweet yeah uh kylie thank you you it, it, it's crazy but do what you gotta do for you I know she was. Uh, she just got engaged and or married. I don't know if they were actually married or not to Isaiah Velasquez. Uh, do what you do. Stay home with family. Get right. If you choose yep. to come back, great. If you choose to not come back, that's fine too. Um, you know, it is a crazy story because, and I like I said, going back to I get where some fans are coming from that looked up to her that, you know, maybe that was at the end of the, their shitty day. She was the answer, but guess what she has those shitty days too you know um, we're all fucking human in this shitty world yeah. uh it's just crazy because i hadn't seen a female performer blow up like like that like as organically you know to be uh, like a part and around that and to see her at all these shows where it's black label warrior freelance or zello or something you know or, and then aew and in the impact yeah you know? And beyond, it was like, dude, there was no doubt in my mind she was destined to be the the top female performer probably in all of sports uh, and entertainment. I'm not going to say sports entertainment because that's for those <laughs> other fucking guys. But uh, maybe she just don't want that, you know? Who, who knows? All I'm saying is personal space, let it be. And uh, thank you for all the fucking memories and all that. Yes. Thank you, Kylie. Thus far, so... 
it was fucking awesome. It was a wild ride. I, I did uh, one match in particular that and it was kind of more recent at Black Label with, against Warhorse. They <laughs> did the fucking uh, oh, dude, yes, <laughs> and it, it was so great, dude. It, it was, was great. It was it was everything you could want in a wrestling match. It was super. They did the dirty dancing in. So we said yeah. they did the dirty. Yeah, dancing they did the scene from Dirty Dancing in. <laughs> the music started playing and fucking Warhorse went up to like she was gonna jump in his arms, you know, like in Dirty Dancing. He spins her around and she went to jump on me, just body slammed her. <laughs> right now, a power slam. It was the best. Yeah. It, it, it uh, was great. But then, in even afterwards, you know, they they shook hands and she put the vest on and was fucking head banging and. Uh, Smiley Kylie, dude, it's it. Hey, I hope she can uh, keep maintain that oh, yeah. smile throughout whatever she's going through. Definitely. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's that a pleasure was, to meet her and talk to her. For yeah. Sure, personally speaking. Super awesome. It's a huge loss to uh, wrestling in general, but uh, women's wrestling as well. A uh, huge loss to impact and uh, all her fans and everything. But, you know, only time will tell. We'll see what happens. And if not, then it was a good ride. True. Yeah. So let's get on the bright side of things because as we end here, I'd like to thank everybody that's continued to support us and listen to us. Um, that's you. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Make sure that you download episodes and rate and review wherever <laughs> you get them from iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, any of those podcasting platforms. We're fucking plastered all over those walls. You can find us everywhere. Just search Juice Pro Wrestling. Leave those fucking reviews. They absolutely do help. And make sure you share them with your friends, like minded individuals, people that, you know, they like a little goofy shit. They like some fucking wrestling knowledge. They like some new. They like all kinds of cool shit. That's what we provide is cool, fun. Maybe not so family for minded entertainment, but it's entertainment. Uh, whoopsie. Yes. Um, and there's one more thing I want to pop here real quick Ooh. before we end. Whoa. So guess what, guys? I actually got to practice for the first time in damn near a year with my band Handsome Prick. Yeah. And guess what? We have a new album coming out. Yeah. It's called Plastic Baby Living Facility. And we got vinyl coming and it's dropping on January 29th. I know it seems like forever, mm -hmm. but it's really not. We got pre-order details coming soon. And we just dropped a new single, a brand new fucking track for you guys. It's been a couple of years. It's called Bad Placenta and it's on right now. Check it out. And until next time, wet them up, wet them up, wet them up. Wet em up, wet em up. I'm so wet, so are you. Wet em up. <laughs> you fucking love us. You know it. Bad placenta. Rocket.
Did you like that video? If so, be sure to hit like and subscribe and check out more killer content from your boys at Juice Pro Wrestling. Whoa, yeah!